So yes, the Polar Vantage V2 has arrived. This time I did get it from Polar, just that for full disclosure for the beginning. It's interesting given all of the discussions because it seems like everybody who wants to review it, who thinks about it, who is a fan of Polars, is looking at it from the perspective of somebody who has a vantage, who maybe had a look or did even have the grid X, and is now saying that, well, this is basically just a software update which I don't actually believe to be true because this watch having a full aluminum case apparently having the Polar Precision Prime 2.0 sensor I guess for OHR means that like the grid X was already it is a new hardware. This construction means a need for completely new hardware or more or less completely one. Of course Polar is not talking about this quite enough so it's partly at least their own fault that this sounds looks whatever like it's just mainly software. I also have to admit that what they have thrown on there all the way to music control on the watch but just for your smartphone playing it so really just control not music on the watch is a bit odd there is a lot of things which are like okay they are just throwing everything on there which they currently can offer which the grid x brought in which the advantage v the original one had and which they have now added here but what I think is really necessary is a look at the Vantage V2 as a new watch, not just as an update or upgrade, but as what it is. And what it is, is after all a new Polar watch for those people who want to eke out the last few seconds of gain that they could perhaps get, who want some guidance in their training from a watch which is made for that. For helping you not just follow a training plan that is fixed, which Polar, Polar Flow actually would still also offer, but to do sleep analysis for you, to tell you how recharged you are, and or to use the Recovery Pro feature to measure your readiness via orthostatic test through OHR using uh, through HRV my apologies through HRV and not through OHR so this is one of the things which I find quite interesting actually because Polar might be able actually to measure HRV via the optical heart rate sensor but typically they are not doing that or at least not doing that much but ask you to use a heart rate belt. So Polar there is really sticking to their guns to their opinion that you should have good data or not use it too much. So yes this of course is a bit of an issue because you can still drain by heart rate zones even be guided into this using only the optical heart rate sensor of the watch but well the recommendation typically is no get it with the H10 in the bundle there's a reason they bundle it even though you have OHR they are not doing things like measuring your stress and your body battery your resources via the optical heart rate sensor throughout the day and then forgetting about that data but telling you something if you use Fitzpark especially in terms of how your training should be depending also on how you slept how you recovered you are and now of course the recovery also includes the leg recovery test testing just from your wrist on the watch how well your leg muscles seem to be recovered or not and giving you another piece of input into whether you should go for some hard training or not this is quite interesting if we don't look at it like should I upgrade from the Vantage or should I not but just should I go for this or not then yeah this might be interesting if you have a Vantage V you might not want to spend this money already yes sure of course but let's focus on what this offers and how to actually get the best out of it. This is what I want to be focusing on with Time & Tours all across it 
and also with my other blogs. Yes, I'm going to say this a bit too often now. Visit Time and Tours, visit uh, Trunkschmidt.com, my Get at Home in this World channel, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And let's see how this works when we use it as it should be done with Fitzbark, especially, and using all of the tests. Let's see if I can get faster that way in my running, for example. Even or especially now that I finally am in employment again and have way too little time for some training which does not adapt to how much time I have in a day. Hmm. So, in the V2 we have a smaller box for once, not the old style bigger boxes, interestingly. Nice, simple, just the usual though. I still am not the biggest fan of unboxings anyways, I must say. Info materials as always, which I typically just forget about immediately and try not to need them. Charging cable is still the same as before, as on the Vantage and Gridax. And there is the watch. This is obviously enough, the um, grey and lime green version. This is a bit curious because um, the Sunto 7 also has a strap which is lime green inside with black on the outside. I find this a bit curious, but anyways. It's, I think, a very nice size. If we look, for example, at the Sunto 9 in comparison, it is a bit smaller, of course considerably thinner. And yeah, all aluminum makes it pretty nice a case. There's actually a gap in there which is, I don't think it's aluminum. The buttons are nicely clicky. And I have to say I like the design of the Vantage V, also the one before this one anyways. which is all like a one-body construction. I like having it like this. I'm guessing there is a sort of quick release or something. I'm not sure how this works, how the straps are attached. Hmm. I like the look of it. Mm, the Polar focuses on the low weight quite a bit. It does certainly not feel heavy, but I don't know, I mean, when you have such a few grams of weight anyways, it's hard to say anything about this if it really is so particularly light or not. But anyways, it's light enough and it's, I think, a very good size to be big enough for nice visibility but not so big that it becomes any sort of issue. Let's get going then with the Polar Vantage V2. Fitzpark is telling me to do some cardio to build my foundations. The recommendation is for a cardio long of 1 hour 25 in heart rate zones 1 to 3. That sounds pretty nice. I think I am going to go for that.
Well, it's a while later now, not just after this first run. As usual, the guidance through a workout is really nice. Fitzbark suggestions of basically just supportive or strength exercises would have been nice, but I had zero time during my work week. I have had time to have a bit more of a look at the Polar Vantage V2 though and it's been interesting. This first run, it was one of the first cold days that we had this year and afterwards we had a week of rain and really cold temperatures so the OHR did have some issues after taking the watch off for a bit to let it not get locked to cadence or whatever that might have done to let it have to capture the heart rate anew again. It was quite okay. For heart rate based training it would still be recommendable to simply, at least in these colder temperatures, get the heart rate belt and use that to really have guidance like this. But well, this is an issue which the Sunto 5 which I used at the same time on that run also had. The GPS looks to be pretty nice, but all of these things are some which we are definitely going to need much more of a look at, much more data to really be able to say something about it. One thing that has become noticeable though is that the glass here is a new Corning Gorilla glass with DLC, the diamond-like coating and with an anti-fingerprint coating. And that's interesting because you still have the touch screen which works quite nicely and it smudges much less. It all looks, not least without so much smudging from fingerprints, clearer. The coating also makes it clearer if a bit more reflective, more mirroring. But with the improvement in the display that is in there as well, like it was on the Grid X already, it is all rather nicer to see. It's still of course not a Wear OS or Apple Watch smart watch display, but nicer, definitely. It is still drawing less battery than a real smartwatch would, so this is also nice. Notifications have been working quite well. Battery has held up pretty nicely, but this too is something for which I, want, I will want to get more data. The other thing, aside from the coating that is really noteworthy, that is worth mentioning now, is that I've now been wearing the watch for a while, also on the night, just shifting it to the right hand for the night. And the low weight does become noticeable, or rather it becomes noticeable that this watch is not noticeable. It really, in spite of the certain size it has, does wear very nicely so that you can forget about it, but you still have it, meaning you still get, for better or worse, because this is not much of a need, the daily heart rate tracking, if you want that, you get, but this is much more interesting, the nightly recharge tracking, the ANS charge tracking and sleep phases tracking, which is nice the way Polar does it. And yeah, you have a watch on yourself which you can use for training and which you are not going to notice much when you go out to train with it. Now though, I really need to find some more time to do more and to see how this can support me in that.